This tutorial shows you how to perform phylogenetically independent contrasts. This method is a way to derive valid conclusions from regressions involving different species. The fundamental problem is that species are not independent of one another. Some species are very closely related, whereas others are very distantly related. Let's show by way of example. Let's say you wanted to test whether there is a positive relationship between the mass of females of species of primates and the average home range sizes of those species. The data that I will be showing you here is from the website indicated by the QR code on your screen. The overall idea that we're working towards here is to see whether there is something fundamental about primates where larger females leads to larger home range sizes due to some inherent properties of primate. Each data point represents a species of primate where a bunch of home range sizes for different groups of that primate were all averaged together for that species to create one number. And where a bunch of the masses of females of that primate species were all averaged together to create one average mass of females for that species. And we have a data point like that for every species you see on the graph. Each species is represented by a single data point. For instance, this species, on average, the females have this mass. And on average, the primate groups of this species have a range size that is this size. So we put a dot here for this species on this graph. And we do that for each species. Using regression analysis, we can determine if there is a positive relationship between average female mass for a particular species and this, that species' average home range size across all species. As you can see, there is a positive trend, as indicated by the regression line, between average female mass of a species and species' average home range sizes suggesting that home range sizes of primates change as females of a primate species get larger. This can lead us to all sorts of hypotheses about what it is about primates that makes female size so important to the size of primate territories. Does it have something to do with their social structures? But not so fast. Let's look at the phylogeny. Notice that these two species of old world monkeys are so closely related that they're in the same genus. So these two species are more, are more like one data point. Of course they'll be similar in a lot of ways because they're so genetically similar. Studying just those primates may not give us any general, generalities about primates overall. And yet we're counting this one data point twice. The solution is to use measurements not from each species on the phylogeny, but rather to use measurements from each node. The nodes are ancestors of the species at the tips of the phylogeny. The tips represent existing species, whereas the nodes represent ancestors of the species that, and these ancestors once existed. And the nodes are also ancestors of other ancestors. Mathematically, evolutionary biologist Dr. Joe Felsenstein showed that the measurements of the nodes are independent of one another, even though the data points at the tips are not. So here's what we do. We use the data that we have for the extant species at the tips. Here's home range size of the species. Here's female mass of the species on average. What you can do is find the average of the tips of, for a clade and use that to infer the measurements of the ancestor at the node for that clade. But you also standardize the data so that the scales are not arbitrary. We won't go into that, but that's why the numbers are those weird decimals. The point is that the measurements at each of these nodes are mathematically independent from the data points at other nodes. And they can thus be used to draw inferences about primates. 
So let's see what the trend looks like when we use the inferred measurements, the standardized inferred measurements, from the nodes, from the inferred ancestors. We can see that, in this case, there is still a positive trend as indicated by the regression line between average female mass of a species and species average home range sizes. Thus, we can now feel free to hypothesize about what it is about primates that makes female size so important to the size of primate territories. We can feel free to hypothesize and to test this phenomenon further because the analysis that we have performed now is not tainted by non-independent measurements. Now let's go through performing the analysis with my R code. This is a quick splice to ask you to consider subscribing to my channel by hitting the subscribe button. It does not cost anything. It is totally free. But if you like what I am doing and want to support my work, I encourage you to visit patreon.com slash joshbanta and make a voluntary contribution. The link is in the show notes below. Your support helps me to deliver new content and keep this channel current and vibrant. Thank you. I will show you this tutorial using the Ubuntu Linux version 20.04 operating system, but to be clear, all you need is to have R and RStudio installed on your computer, whatever your operating system is. You could be using a Windows machine, you could be using a Mac machine. You don't need to emulate a Linux machine. You can install RStudio and R natively on whatever operating system you're using, and you can follow the steps in this tutorial to do what I am showing you how to do. This tutorial assumes you have RStudio installed. See the show notes below for another video that I made to install it. This tutorial assumes you already have the R package caper installed, as well as the program fig tree. This tutorial assumes you are using Ubuntu Linux version 20.04 as your operating system. If you do not have Linux, you can emulate it on your Windows computer for free. See the show notes for details. I am emulating Linux right now. I have virtual machines pre-configured with the software I will show you today, as well as other population genetics and ecological niche modeling software. See the show notes below for step-by-step -step instructions to download and hook up this virtual machine. Let's go ahead and get started. Let's go ahead and get started. First, open up Chrome or another browser window, which I have pinned to my favorites on the left or which you can find by searching below. Navigate to my website, joshbanta.com. Click on Tutorials. Type Control F to open up a search window and type in phylogenetically independent contrasts. There it is. So we will click on that link. Click on Files Needed for Tutorial. Click the Download button to download those files onto your computer. When the download is finished, you may close the browser. Next, navigate to your Downloads folder by opening File Explorer, which I have pinned to my favorites on the left or which you can find by searching below. Double-click on the file we just downloaded, ic.zip. The files are in a compressed zip archive. We need to uncompress them to a different location on our virtual machine in order to be able to access those files. To do this, open up File Explorer again, navigate to the desktop, click the drop-down arrow next to the word desktop at the top of the File Explorer window, and select New Folder. For the folder name, type IC, and click on Create. 
double click on the new folder I see. Now we return to our compressed zip archive by going back to the archive manager. With the archive manager selected as the active window, type control A. This highlights everything that is within that ar zip archive. Now click on any one of those icons, hold the click, and drag all of those files into the IC folder of File Explorer for your desktop. The files have now been extracted into the IC folder on your desktop and we can close the Archive Manager software. Let's go over the data that you will need to perform independent contrasts. You will be using the data that you just downloaded for the purposes of this tutorial, but I want to give you a greater feel for the data for when you decide to perform this analysis using your own data, but using my resources. First, let's double click on probset5.data.csv. Click OK to open it in LibreOffice with the defaults. This is where you put your average species measurements. The first column has a header that can be anything that you want, but it, this is going to be the column where you put your list of species. The next column is going to be your X variable, and the third column will be your Y variable. You can call in the first row the X variable anything you want. In your own data, you will likely not be using female mass as your X variable. You'll be using whatever variable you are interested in, and so you can title this whatever you like. With your own data, you likely won't be using home range size as your Y variable. You'll be using whatever data and whatever measurement you like, and you can change this header in row in the first row to be whatever that you like. But in the second column is where you put the average species measurements for the X variable for each of your species. And then in the third column, this is where you put the average species measurements for the Y variable for each of your species. You may close LibreOffice. Next, we will examine our phylogeny, which is in the Newick tree format. Start by opening up a terminal window, which I have pinned to my favorites on the left or which you may find by searching below. Type fig tree. With the fig tree software open, select File from the, and from the drop-down menu, select Open. Navigate to your desktop, double-click the IC folder, click on tree.tre, and then click the button that says Open. This file has your phylogeny in the Newick tree format. Notice that we have exactly the same species labels here as in here. These labels much, must match perfectly in terms of uppercase or lowercase, in terms of any spaces or underscores, and in terms of not having extraneous invisible spaces after the labels. So these labels here must match perfectly the labels of your Newick tree file here. You may close FigTree. Next, open up RStudio, which I have pinned to my favorites on the left or which you may find by searching below. Select File, and then from the drop-down menu, select Open File. Navigate to the desktop, double-click on the IC folder, highlight the file independentcontraststutorial.r, and click the Open button. First, be sure to set your working directory. This is the folder where you will have all of your files for this analysis, including this R script. Since we will have all of the files in the same folder, we can set our working directory to the source file location, meaning the location of this R script. Select Session from the menu at the top, and from the drop-down menu, go to Set Working Directory, and select to Source File Location. 
we will be running the analysis on the tutorial data, so there is nothing that we need to change in our R script. Everything is already set up to work with the tutorial data. But in the future, if you are using this R script on your own data, here are the things that you will need to change. First of all, on line 9, change the name of this tree file to reflect the name of the tree file that you are using based upon your own phylogeny. Next, on line 12, change the name of this CSV file to reflect the name of the CSV file where you include your list of species and their X and Y measurements. Next, highlight lines 6 through 18 and click Run. On your screen, you see the results presented in an ANOVA table. Look at the p-value. This tells you if your x variable, in this case the mass of females of the various species, is significantly associated with your y variable, in this case the home range sizes of the different species. If the p-value is less than 0.05, then this relationship of x and y variables is significantly different from zero. Now, highlight lines 21 and 22 and click on Run. This is a graph of home range size as a function of the mass of the females of the different species. To save it, click on the arrow next to Export, revealing a drop-down menu, and choose Save as PDF. Click on Directory navigate to the desktop, we will highlight the folder IC and we will click on open. Next, change the file name to original.pdf. This was the regression and the graph for the original data without performing independent contrasts. Click on save. Now let's use the data based on independent contrasts. First, let's obtain the measurements of the ancestors at the nodes. These measurements are called the independent contrasts. To do that, run lines 25 and 26. Now run lines 29 through 30. On your screen, you again see the results presented in an ANOVA table. Look at the p-value. This tells you if your x variable, in this case the average mass of females of the different species, is significantly associated with your y variable, in this case the home range sizes of the different species. If the p-value is less than 0.05, then this relationship of the x variable and the y variable is significantly different from zero. Now run lines 33 through 37. This is a graph of home range size as a function of female mass, with the trend line, which is also called the regression line, being shown. To save it, Click on the button that says Export, revealing a drop-down menu, and select Save as PDF. Be sure that the directory chosen is the IC folder on your desktop. Change the file name to IC.PDF and click on Save. This is the regression and the graph based upon the independent contrast data from the inferred measurements of the inferred ancestors at the nodes. Now let's look at the saved graphs to ensure that they saved properly. Open File Explorer and navigate to your desktop. Then open the folder IC. Now double click on original.pdf. This is based on the original data. Now close the PDF. Now double click on IC.PDF. This is based on the independent contrast data. Now close the PDF. This concludes the tutorial.